I spent the greater part of my last week arguing on Twitter and YouTube about whether movement is good in Tekken. And some of you might be thinking, well, why would anybody argue about that? Movement is cool. And the others of you will probably argue, well, yeah, movement is dumb and gatekeepy, you elitist pro. So, which is it? Let me take you through an old video that I'm a big fan of. This is from Tekken 5 DR. It's a match between Qdans and me. And it's broken down in text, but I want to go down even deeper and really, really take the time to appreciate how cracked these players were and how good they are. Get ready for the next battle. This is, yeah, Tekken 5 DR, Neon Brian against Qdans on Devil Jin. We're going to let, the footage is going to roll first and it's going to rewind a few times. But keep your eyes peeled. All right, he's like, wait, play that back. And this is where this is where it gets cool. Okay, so first, it's Tekken 5 DR, different game. Let's look at their tools. Brian he has an eight frame jab. If you don't know, the regular Tekken jab nowadays is 10 frames. So his jab is pretty fast. His pokes are a bit weak, but his offense is slow. So he's easy to counter hit and punish. And then Devil Jin is the same character from Tekken 7. Uh, oppressive electric, super strong mids. He has a poking game. He has tracking options. He has the hell sweep, a bit of everything. A menace, to say the least. Let's run this first round. All right, so this is, this is happening really quick. I'll be doing some rewinding. Uh, if it's too slow for you, check out the original video. It's really good. But look at this. Round start, Brian does a sidestep left, down back. This beats so many Devil Jin default options. It beats the electric, probably beats the forward forward two, beats an immediate hell sweep, beats any of the pokes too. You can see it evades the jab. Good start. But knee is slow and doesn't react to the, the whiff jab properly. And he eats half his life bar for that electric. Knee manages to interrupt with a jab here. But because, again, we talked about Brian's offense being slow, uh, he gets mashed on right away. So even though he has the jab advantage, look, he does the slower kick. Qdans does this one, uh, what, one, two, three, one, two, four. Immediately hits him. Then he dashes at him and plays Demon Paw. And Knee tries to step it, but because it's, co it's coming immediately, right away while he's at that disadvantage, Knee gets hit. Then Qdans runs up and just hits him two more times. Runs up, one, two, Knee gets hit trying to step again. Down forward one, Knee is blocking. Knee back dashes once. Qdans catches him by advancing and doing his own low poke, look at this. So they both move like this, and then he gets hit. All right, and then, so that's the definition of immediate timing, is as soon as you enter the range of where an attack is a threat, you do the attack. So he's referring to the demon paw here. As soon as the demon paw's in range, he just does it. Okay, but this, this round is where knee, to say adapts, it does not do justice. I'm glazing. To say adapt does not do justice to how well he flips this game completely around, okay? And there's going to be another breakdown, so let's just let it rock. And spectators might be tempted to say, oh, he's just moving around. He's not doing anything. Look, Devil Jin can't hit him. That's so lame. I really want to challenge that belief right here, okay? Look at... This is not an accident. This was not him. Let me run it one more time. This is not him waiting around for an opportunity. This is not Qdans just whiffing because he's not good, okay? This is an intense mind game that leads to this whiff right there, okay? We're gonna, he's gonna, speed's gonna break it down and we're gonna watch the rest of the rounds, all right? So what did he do in the first round? Sidestep left down back, which is good coverage, good reward, but is a bit greedy. You can get hit by many things, especially by ducking. So knee backdash is out of range. And it's just one backdash, just one backdash. We're not talking crazy Korean backdash, okay? This is a regular human backdash, single backdash. Okay, and uh, what does Devil Jin do? He whiffs it down forward too. But now, this is the cool part. Knee can't really get a whiff punish on that, or he's not confident in whiff punishing. So he runs straight back into range zero. Why does he do that? It's the eight frame jab. Forces Qdans to play around the eight frame jab. Using forward movement to stay in the range of the jab threat, right? So the jab is only useful if he's standing right there. And then, what are the risks of dashing forward? A lot of people will say, how do I dash block? You know, I keep getting hit. 
Knee is canceling those forward dashes, but he's not jabbing right away. He's putting in fuzzy ducks. That way he gets around jab, he gets around electric, keep out hell sweep if that's what happened, generic down four, all of these pokes that would stop him coming in, he's moving around it. All right, look at this round one. All right, let's let, it, it, it happens real quick. Sorry, look at this round one. Uh, he comes into range zero, gets the jab here, right? And when he tries to close the space again, see he moves forward right there. Kudans hits the one, two, four. So knee adapts and says, you didn't try to poke me, I'm ducking. I'm jabbing, I'm ducking. All right, so jab right there. It happens right there immediately. Look at this again. All right, jab, he gets hit. Jab on block, not on hit. Fuzzy ducks this 1-1. One, one. Blocks a second hit, but whatever. Knee's pretty good. Qdans ducks the jab. Nice. We see another return of the sidestep left, okay? Sidestep left. Low poke. Staring at knee here. And now, this is this is where you'd be tempted to think. Knee's just moving around. He's getting nothing done. And Qdans is forced to play lame because the other guy's not there. No, no, no. It's a bit, it's a bit deeper, okay? So look at what happened in the first seven seconds. Knee kept dashing up, dashing up, right? Because Knee has this dominant jab out of Brian. And Qdan's already lost that little sliver of HP right here to that poke. So Qdan's adapts immediately. This is seven seconds into round two, okay? Jab, stop, stop dashing into me. Electric, stop dashing into me. One, two. He misses the orbital, but you will notice right away that... Knee is also not continuing that offense. He spent the first seven seconds showing Qdans that he's going to run up and try to control range zero. And Qdans says, nah, get out of my face. And Knee is prepared for him to say, get out of my face. That's why he does the orbital there. He wants to beat these attempted keep out options. Let's keep moving. Qdans doesn't want to attack on immediate timing due to Knee's jabbing. What does that mean? As soon as Qdans gets in range, Knee starts jabbing, right? So he doesn't want to get hit by that. In this game, if you, jab, you get, eat too many jabs, you actually lose a lot of HP, right? So that's why he's doing all these moves from far away to try and beat the jab before it comes out. Right? But because of all of that control where, say, uh, from this distance, he wants to swing. From this distance, he has to wait for the jab, otherwise he'll get hit. Remember that immediate timing thing that hit Knee's sidestep? What happens without it? Boom. It's easy to sidestep when you control the timing of your opponent's attack. Run that back, okay? So if in the in the in the clip right before, you'll look at look at the, the zoomed in clip here, or the smaller clip. So jab, one, two, four. And then he dashes and immediately does it, okay? This is the difference, what happens here. Th this happens so quick, okay? You gotta, you gotta peep this. So he's wave dashing in, going under jabs, and then he does this little stutter step, this pause right here. That little stutter step is what knees jab and back dashing and sidestepping set up. It forces him... If, if Qdans continues to just attack on immediate timing, those options kill him. The jabs kill him, the immediate sidestep kills him, the fuzzy ducks will kill him, right? So Qdans adapts and delays. Little stutter step and then swings. Knee is ready for that. This is 15 seconds into round two. They've gone through counter adaptation. So, so Knee lost the round first round. He adapts. Qdans counter adapts after seeing it in the first seven seconds. Knee understands that counter adaptation and kills him for it. That's incredible. This is round two. Sure, they've probably played each other before. But look at the options afforded to him just because he can move. He's not just waiting around for something to happen. He's deliberately moving to change Qdans' behavior. Look at, look at how this low hits. It's not noted, but look at this. Qdans runs up and ducks because of this 8-frame jab. Oh, the jab didn't come. Let me stand up and do something. Now the low hits. Layers on layers on layers. Enabled by the movement. Devil Jin's buttons are better than Brian's buttons, but Qdans doesn't want to whiff. Look at how Knee plays this again. Spacing away, seeing what Qdans wants to do. There's a keep out electric that doesn't come out. Knee is already back into range zero. He did a little fuzzy duck. Okay, range zero. Dash, dash, dash. Sidestep right, sidestep right. 
This is aggressive movement. This is not movement saying, ha ha, catch me. This is, I'm going in your face, try to hit me. Knee establish control of this match with movement and a jab. Using down four and down two so Kiran's doesn't just stand there and block all day. If you don't contest him, then you lose to this slow and weak mix-up. But if you do attack, then he controls the timing and forces you to whiff. Scary stuff. This is what is enabled. Oh, wait, hold on. He says from here, he just kind of wins. Enjoy. All right. Now, but let's actually let's actually zoom in on this a little bit. Like the point is mostly covered, but you can you can see what happened, right? Forward dashing, forward dashing, forward dashing, small mix up there. Forward dash side step right. This is aggressive movement. Just because there's not a hitbox coming out on the screen doesn't mean he's not taking a big risk. Look at how often he's not blocking. He's in there. And this is why so many old head players will always be like, man, we wish Tekken 7 had better movement. We wish these things. Because if you can't sidestep around your opponent's options, if they can nuke you in one hit, none of this is worth it, right? It's not worth running into somebody's face and doing all this nonsense. You're forced to, in Tekken 7, just backdash because of how strong everybody's moves are. You die in like one hit. You die in one counter hit. Any of these down fours get low parried. It's over. Now, you might make the argument, if you've known Tekken 5 DR, that... If you get low period in this game, you actually get a full launch. Isn't that just as bad? Yes and no. In this game, just because you got full launch once doesn't mean the game is over, right? Because the ability to continue enforcing your game plan on your opponent is so consistent. So getting red for that one low does not neuter your game plan. But because attacking in the newer Tekkens is so hard to do reliably without getting counter hit, without getting launched, it makes the next low you try to do much, much harder. Much, much harder to pull off this gameplay. Look at how many fuzzy ducks he's doing. He gets clipped there sidestepping. Ducks one. He did like three. Right? This is not, again, this is not just backdashing. He's backdashing here. It's to set up. He's getting a gauge on Qdan's attention. Is Qdan's in keep out mode? Or is he in passive mode? If he's in passive mode, I can start running up and doing that jab game, that mix-up game. If he's in keep out mode, I just got to get a whiff. So what is Qdan's doing here? Just backdashing. Because he doesn't want to whiff. Right? Both players are deeply engaged in adjusting to each other. Holy moly, dude. Qdan's been passive? Okay. Maybe I have a chance to swing. Boom. Sidestep right on the immediate timing approach. Sorry, the, um, the approach? Let me phrase that better. That was not immediate timing. That was delayed timing. It's happening so fast, I can't even keep up with it. How do I know it's delayed timing? Look at this. He gets in range here, sits still, and then does his button. That's the, that's the delayed timing versus immediate timing. Music ends here. He's dead. This is just bonkers, man. This is so cool. Let's, let's, compare, it to, uh, let's compare it to a very specific clip. God, is there a place I'm going to find it? Uh, I'm going to let it play now and talk a bit about it. When this first came out, everybody on Twitter was saying, yeah, this is, this is the real Tekken we've wanted. And honestly, I did too. But when I talked to some better pros with a lot more analysis and kind of a better understanding of the old games, they were telling me that this is nothing like that at all. If you look at Lydia's movement, right? If you understand how Kazuya works, a lot of Lydia's movement should be going to the left. She'd be walking left for the mix-ups. Uh, you know, those fuzzy ducks for the electrics she was doing earlier, are those are legit. But this is just so different from what it was before. Lydia's strength is that she has these giant hitboxes. So she should be able to control Kazuya, but it's just, it's just too risky. And here the time is finally running out. He goes for the down back four, and Knee finds the sidestep right duck. And the time's going to run out, and he's going to win. So let's, let's run that back one more time. Look at Kazuya's movement this whole time. He's doing a lot of forward dashing in these baby sidestep rights, but a lot of it is moving forward and back and forward and back. And the reason is, is it's just not feasible to really control your opponent with your movement in this game. Right? Lydia has such insane moves. 
Lydia, this is at the time where Lydia's uh, political storm uh, was able to go like full screen and would still knock you down. It was worth doing. It is so difficult to fight against Lydia's hitboxes. So here, Nii isn't going for that kind of option select movement to get his opponent to attack on the timings he wants or to bait certain hitboxes instead of other ones that will whiff. Nii is purely playing, I have to let him do something first. I have to let Lydia take the lead so I can try to play off of an advantaged situation. For example, when the down four hits here, Ni finally has the frame advantage to try something, so he throws a jab. <laughs> and, like, that's it. Right, he's obviously watching Kakoma's movement and trying to see if there's any openings, but he's not forcing any attacks, like the one electric he does whiffs, right? So he's forced to let Lydia take the lead. But because Kakoma doesn't want to run into an electric or a down forward two or get low parried, Kakoma's not really taking the lead until this specific segment. Kakoma still has the health lead, so they're really just playing the clock. Ni tries to jab again. Ni's just blocking. He finally gets some advantage off of that string. This string is so negative that Ni is basically able to do what he wants for the first time. And what does he do with it? A, like a 13 frame kick poke. Still losing in the health lead. Can't force anything. Kakoma is showing a lot of ducks, which turns off electric and health sweep, right? But forward forward three is still too risky against that kind of movement. So the, t the clock is finally running out and it's almost time for them to actually make some decisions instead of just these mid pokes and high pokes and things like that. Kakoma plays the down back too. 10 seconds left. Knee jabs again. And here, Kakoma was playing as if the game was over, right? It's time to make a decision. But Knee, Knee knew it still wasn't time yet. He still could just play his small movement and hope a mistake came and there it came. So, on one hand, on one hand, Ni nee is still trying to execute that style from before, as best as he can, right? If he can make his opponent make a mistake without him taking a risk, that is a winning situation. However, it is so much less dynamic in this game. There is way less intent, way less mind gaming. Remember that in that last clip, after the first round... There was seven seconds of Ni moving and jabbing differently. And Kudans countered that immediately, which Ni countered again to make his plays. This is a very static same game plan for the whole 60 seconds. It is, are you going to make an obvious attack timing for me to low parry? Are you going to play out of frame for me to poke? Or are you going to take a mix up that isn't, doesn't have to happen? while I play the clock. It's completely different. And this is the boring gameplay that they're trying to avoid with Tekken 8. The problem is this gameplay only emerged because they nerfed movement in the first place for Tekken 7. Because you can't reliably sidestep that down four, because you can't reliably sidestep Kazuya's electric, because you cannot get around Lydia's pokes like at all, except for that down back four, right? It just doesn't make sense to play that movement style. You are better off just backdashing when everybody has a nuclear warhead ready to go at a moment's notice, right? A tracking, safe, huge move that is impossible to get around. And that's why Tekken 7 is more forward and back and less, like, you know, attacking with forward, attacking with sidestep. It's just not the same game. Even though on the surface it looks really similar. The exciting part about all this, this is not to be a total doomer, the exciting part about all this is Tekken 8 is showing a lot of promise on that end, right? If you didn't see my other video, this video is extremely promising because you'll see how effective my sidesteps are. And because backdashing isn't that good, it almost kind of shoehorns me into this attacking movement style, right? Run up, get in his face, threaten an option. If he tries to play a keep out move, I can get around it reliably. This is actually really promising. Like, this is closer to that style of Tekken 5 gameplay than Tekken 7 was. Now, given we have the whole heat system, we have the whole force 50-50, but look at that. Look at how reliable that is. You have more leniency in your ability to make a timing read. But this isn't all one-sided. When I played Kazuya as well, 
you are able to realign better. So if your opponent is making this sidestep read and you counter read him, you're not screwed. It's easier to realign your attack and counter their sidestep. So in terms of dynamic offensive gameplay and attacking movement, this game is looking like it has that. I'm really, really excited for that. The exception is, of course, when you go into some kind of heat movement, right? Like, he has to guess that. And that's a little dumb. I can understand why they have it. It's a bit more noob friendly. It's a, a bit more of a high stress situation. It gives you an incentive to try to deny their heat state in the first place. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe I died there. Anyways, it's been a long enough video. Those are my takes on movement. Hopefully you guys appreciate that. I think movement can be really cool, man. I think movement is sick. I'm glad it's really back in Tekken 8. I hope they make backdashing a little better so it's just more than attacking movement. You have a bit more dynamic gameplay with keep out, uh, with playing optimal ranges like Jin having such a dominant right foot that goes like a mile long. Uh, being able to leverage that advantage leads to other kinds of cool gameplay. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you didn't, let me know in the comments. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.